21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Who shot? Well, where? All right, just take it easy. Talk slower so I can understand you. Now, where is this? Where? Yeah. You are by transcription in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right, don't worry about that part of it. We'll take care of it. Yeah, we'll send the ambulance right away. That's right. Right away. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st. 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants, of whom I'm the boss. My name is Cronin, Vincent P. Cronin. I am captain in command of the 21st Precinct. I was doing night duty, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. It was dark, foggy night, and between dusk and midnight, when I returned to the station house from patrol to turn out the platoon for the 12th away tour, we were plagued with automobile accidents. When I walked into the muster room behind the desk to sign the blotter, the 52 men who would patrol the streets of the precinct on post and in sector cars for the next eight hours were being assembled for inspection in the back room. On a signal from the desk officer, the platoon was brought to attention and marched into the muster room in a military manner. There, as they faced the desk, the official roll was called for entry in the blotter, the event-by-event -event record of occurrences in the precinct. Yes. 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 Weber. Yes. Benjamin. Yes. McKenna. Yes. Esposito. And... All right, man. <clears throat> it's uh, extremely foggy tonight. During the 4 to 12, we had eight motor vehicle accidents. Two of them involved pedestrians who were both seriously injured. Now, uh, those of you assigned to sector cars, be on the alert for vehicle speeding and without proper license. Also, I want to warn you about the operation of your own cars. Visibility is extremely limited. Pedestrians are almost impossible to see until you're right on top of them. or use utmost caution. The clerical man tells me that a number of you are delinquent in paying your house tax. Any man who isn't paid up by the 4 to 12 on Wednesday will get a forthwith. And so, Sergeant, post the platoon. Platoon, attention. Right, face. Forward, march. I'll be in my office, Sergeant. Yes, sir. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Oh. Vice Precinct, Captain Cronin. Sergeant Waters on CS, Captain. We got a report of a policeman shot at 104th Street and Park Avenue. I'll be right out. Yes, sir. That's all I got, CB. Yeah. 104th and Park. Okay. What do you got, Sergeant? She's putting it out on the air now, Captain. Yeah. Who's on post over there? Ballard, Captain. He was there for the 4 to 12, and his relief hasn't had a chance to get over yet. I better notify the detectives. Go ahead. This is Sergeant Waters on TS. We've got a report of a police officer shot at 104th Street and Park Avenue. I don't know. That's all we've got. Okay. How'd you get it, Sergeant? The civilian used a call box on a the corner there. He told me there was a policeman shot. He was excited. Hung up. I couldn't get any more out of him. All right, I'll go on over. Go out and hold one of the cars for me. Yes, sir. I signed the blotter, went into my office with my cap, and then back through the muster room to the front door of the station house. Patrolman Egan and Lewis were waiting at the curb to relieve the operator and recorder of sector car number three, who were due to go off duty. Within a minute, the car came around the corner and stopped in front of the station house. I got in and gave instructions to make the run to 104th Street and Park Avenue. The weather was still foggy and visibility extremely poor. We neared the scene, I could make out two sector cars parked along the curb. The shooting had occurred on the side of a new housing project where old law tenements were in the process of being wrecked 
to make room for the new multiple dwelling. You two get on a job? Over there, you, Vicaro, Farron. Well, what is it, Sergeant? Who shot? Well, we don't know yet, Captain. He's unidentified. Well, he's not from the 21st? No, sir. Where's the cop? Oh, no. Nothing over here, Sergeant. Not a thing. Well, look on the other side there. Well, who is it? Policeman shot a thief. Ballard. Oh. Over there, Captain. He's pretty bad. All right. Watch your step on these loose stones. They're treacherous. Yeah. Civilian he sent to ring in got us all mixed up, I think. Watch it. Yeah. Watch it. Real rough walking, yeah. Especially on a night like this, you can't see anything. Okay, Captain. We never did get over this far, Sergeant. All right, well, look the other way, then. What are you looking for, Sergeant? The gun the boy had. Oh, wasn't it right with him? No, sir. Watch it here. Yeah. Yeah. Did they have a gun? Well, Ballard said there were three shots fired at him. All right, let the captain in there. Let him in there. Put your light on him there. Uh-huh. See? Pretty bad, Captain. Did he say anything? No, sir. He was unconscious when I got here. But Carol, Baron, yes, when you go to the car, ring in again for the ambulance. Yes, for the young sergeant, I guess he's about 17, I'd say. Maybe 16. How many shots did he fire at Ballard? Three, Captain, according to Ballard. Any identification on him? Yes, he had a wallet in his pocket. It says he's uh, Harry Malenke, 733 East 107. How many times was he hit? Just once, it looks like. That's all I can see. Mm. Get Ballard over here? Yes, sir. Ballard! You two stick with him until the ambulance comes in. Ballard! Yes, Sergeant. Come on over here. Where? Over here. The captain wants to see you. Yes, sir. Who was next on the scene after Ballard, Sergeant? Well, I was, Captain. My operator and I, Underwood. And what did you find? Well, we stopped the uh, car on the street out there. Saw a flashlight back in here. And I called. Ballard answered, and I came on back. He was over there trying to do something for the boy. Did he tell you what happened? Yes, sir. He said he jumped him trying to break into a parked car. Chased him back in there. There was some... Shot fired at him, and he fired back. Uh-huh. Sergeant, is that you? Yeah, right here. Hello, uh, Captain. Rollins, any sign of the gun? No, sir. You better go help him look for it, Sergeant. Yes, sir, right away. And, uh, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Check on that ambulance again. Yes, sir. Is anyone taking a look over here? Uh, huh? What happened, Rollins? Well, I was walking my post, Captain. It was just about 12 o'clock, almost exactly. I turned the corner on the park. Yes? And there was this car parked on the street about 35 or 40 feet from the corner. I saw this fellow standing right at the door there. Looked to me like he was trying to pry open the vent window. 35 or 40 feet? Yes, sir. How could you see that far ahead in this fog? Well, the car was parked right under a street lamp. It was that one there, Captain. I could see what he was doing. All right, and? I saw him, but he didn't see me, so I figured I'd get up on him and catch a thief in the act, so I started to him. Yes? Well, he spotted me when I got within 15 or 20 feet of him, and he took off. Yeah. I hollered at him to hold up, but he kept on going. He, uh, he cut right into here, into the rubble. Yeah. I came after him. Well, I, I didn't see exactly which way he went at first. Then I spotted him again. He was hiding over and around here someplace. So I, uh, I called to him to stand up. And he stood up all right. He stood up and he fired two shots at me. I thought it was three shots. Well, it was three, Captain. See, I had my gun out and I fired at the flashes. The fog was so thick that that's all I could see. I started to come in on him. And then I saw him up on the top of that pile of bricks over there. Yes. And he took another shot at me from there. See, the third one. Oh. So I fired two shots back at him, and then I heard him scream. So I examined him. He looked pretty bad. I looked around for the gun. I looked on his person and on top of the pile of bricks. Wasn't anywhere around. So I left him. I ran back out the street, and I stopped the first civilian I saw. I told him to go to the call box and ring in. Hey, that must be the ambulance. Yeah, must be. Ballard, when you spotted him working on the car window, didn't you see how young he was? Well, it was pretty hard to see anything, Captain. You saw enough to convince you he was trying to break into the car, didn't you? Yes, sir. And you didn't see how young he was? No, sir. You chased him off the sidewalk and under here, over this rubble. Yes, sir, that's he right. He turned, fired two shots. Sir. Yes, sir. And it wasn't until after he fired the first two shots that you returned the fire. No, sir. When he got to the top of that pile of bricks, he fired a shot again. Yes, sir. And you fired two more shots. That's right, Captain. There's no possibility you could be mistaken about him firing the shots. No, sir. It's not possible that what you thought was shots were, in fact, an automobile on Park Avenue back oh, firing. Oh, sir, I saw the flash. All right. Let's go over. Yes, sir. 
He was shooting at me, all right, Captain. Come on, Underwood, but Carol Farron, let's have a little help get him on the track. Yeah, yeah. Get his legs. All right, sir. Put him on. He's got it. He's He was shooting at me, Captain. There's no question about that. All right, now, where's the front? Watch it there. Left, that's it. Is it clear up ahead there? Yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. Now, we'll watch the loose stone. Take it easy with him now. Take it. Okay, go ahead. Let's I play. sure hope that kid makes it, Captain. You better hope for something else, too, Ballin. You better hope we find that gun. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's greatest city. How slick can a sleuth be? Well, frankly, it would be difficult to find a detective with more savoir-faire than that mystery-solving mastermind, Johnny Dollar, who moves along from clue to clue with an impressive amount of ease. Right now, yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is looking into a baffling little matter of, shall we say, mischief? Listen for every thrilling episode in his current case and make yours truly, Johnny Dollar, a Monday through Friday night habit over most of these same stations. And now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Cronin. The badly wounded suspect was driven straight downtown to Bellevue Hospital. Meanwhile, detectives of the 21st Squad under the command of Lieutenant Matt King arrived on the scene to take over the investigation. They and the uniformed officers continued to search the area for the gun which Patrolman Francis Ballard said had been fired at him. An emergency truck was sent for and giant floodlights were set up. The search of the rubble was still in progress when Detective William Novak was sent by Lieutenant King to the address found in the wounded suspect's pocket, 733 East 107th Street. Detective Novak walked to the stoop of the old rundown tenement building and found the name Malenke on the mailbox. He tried the hall door. It was open. He walked up three flights of stairs and approached the door in front of the building. Detective. Who? Police officer. Oh. Does Harry Malenke live here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm his mother. Can I come in? What is it? What's the matter? Did he do something? What'd he do? Let's sit down, Mrs. Malenke. We'll talk about him. What did he do? He was stealing from cars. Oh, no. No, not Harry. No, it couldn't be. Suppose we sit down and talk about it. <laughs> not my Harry. And he got hurt, too. Hurt? Yes. Shot. I'm sorry. He couldn't. He's in Bellevue. Not my Harry. My Harry is asleep in there. I heard him come in. Did you? I was in bed. Not asleep, just in bed. I heard him come in, go to his room. I'll show you. Not my Harry. Yeah, I'd like to see him. He's asleep. I'll show you. <laughs> Harry. Harry. What is it, Ma? <gasps> George. Where's Harry? How should I know? Harry isn't here. And what's this all about? Who are you? It's my son, my other son, George. Harry's hurt? Shot? Where? In Bellevue. Oh, no. No. All right. Malinky, why don't you sit down? Huh? My poor Harry. My poor Harry. Sit down. Is he all right? Tell me. Don't lie to me. What happened to him? He's dead, isn't he? No, he's not dead. He's hurt pretty bad, but he's not dead. Oh, no. <laughs> Will you tell me what's going on here? You answer a few questions first. You live here? I used to. Hey, Ma, cut it out, huh? He'll be all right. I know, I know. He won't. He won't. You don't live here now? Where do you live? In Jersey. I live over there with my aunt. I work there. Hey, Ma, cut it out. My poor Harry, my boot. Bellevue. Can I go? Can I go to him? Yes, you can go. If you work in Jersey and live there, what are you doing here? I come here and stay once in a while. When I'm in New York late. Huh, Ma? Don't I? Don't you what, George? Don't I stay here when I'm in New York? Yeah, yeah, you stay. It must have been George come in. I thought it was Harry. That's what I thought. How bad. Very bad. Pretty bad. Oh, my Harry. My poor Harry. Hey, listen. What happened, huh? He was shot. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah, I know that, but how? A police officer caught him breaking into a car. He ran and fired a couple of shots at the officer. Not my Harry. No, Harry wouldn't do that, would he, George? How should I know, Ma? How should I know what he'd do? He wouldn't. Not Harry. I'm sorry, Mrs. Malenke, but it looks like he did. While the mother and her other son got dressed to go to Bellevue Hospital, where Harry Malenke was in a critical condition, the search for the weapon continued at the scene of the shooting. While the fog had lifted somewhat, the gun could not be found. And at 2.15 a.m., more than two hours after the original call, the search was abandoned for the night. The patrolman was assigned to a fixed post to guard over the scene until detectives could resume their search in the daylight. I returned to the station house with Patrolman Ballard. It was 2.30 a.m. when we walked into the muster room. Ballard? Yes, sir. Can you talk to the desk officer, give him all the information on this? Yes, sir. As soon as you finish with that, report to me in my office. Yes, sir. Oh, Captain. Yes? Can I uh, call down to the hospital and find out how the boy is doing? You go talk to the desk officer. I'll, I'll let you know how he's getting on. Yes, Captain. Hello, Skipper. Sergeant, did you hear from Bellevue on that boy? Yes, sir. What about him? Not so good, Captain. It was right through the back and into the stomach. They got him on the operating table now. What about his family? The mother's been notified. Novak was up there. You know, he told me he had a time making the mother believe it was her boy. Yeah. She insisted he was home in bed. Turned out it was another son she heard come in. Lives in Jersey and stays there once in a while. Mm -hmm. All right, Sergeant. Keep me informed. Can I see you a minute, Captain? Oh, no, hello, Max. Sure. Lieutenant King? As soon as I sign the blotter mat, I'll be right with you. Yes, sir. That was a rough deal tonight, huh, Lieutenant? Yeah. I heard from the hospital he's not so good. I know. I've got a detective down there. Oh, yeah? You uh, want to go into my office, man? Yes, sir. That'd be all right. A rough deal, Captain. Yes. 20 plate precincts, Sergeant Ward. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah? Who told you that? Sit down, man. Yeah, thanks. I don't know Ballard very well, Captain. What kind of a 42 has he got? Well, he's a St. John's graduate. Been in the precinct since he got out of the academy. It's more than a year now. His brother's in the job, so is his father. Father retired about four years ago. No complaints on his 42. He made one good car about two months ago. He got suspicious of a car that he pulled to a stop on a signal light up town. And turned out it was stolen. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir, I remember. He's a quiet boy, not a particularly good mixer around the house. Any reason to think he'd be trigger-happy? No, not to date. Well, I hate to say this, Captain. Do you know what I think? I've got an idea, Matt. There's no sign of a gun around there anyplace. We don't need daylight. We went through that pile of junk with a fine-tooth comb. I don't think that Malenki boy ever did have a gun. I think Ballard jumped the boy, took out after him, pulled his own gun, let fire. He hit him and thought better of what he'd done and told the story about getting fired at himself by three shots. I'm afraid that's the way it looks, man. Well, the worst of it is, Captain, we can't find any evidence that the boy was trying to break open that car. There's not a mark on it. I examined that window personally. Not a scratch. Yeah. Now, I checked the boy out through BCI. There's nothing on him. No one's ever been arrested in the city of New York under the name of Harry Malenke. That doesn't necessarily mean he's not a thief. No, sir, but it certainly doesn't mean that he is. The closest BCI shows under the name of Malenke is the arrest of a boy named George Malenke. They couldn't be the same. This other one is over 20. He's done a bit in Elmira. He's on parole now, living and working in Jersey. Oh, is that so? The records show nothing else. Yes? Ballard, Captain. Come in, Ballard. Close the door there, Ballard. Yes, sir. Hello, Lieutenant King. Ballard. Well, I gave Lieutenant Snyder the information on the arrest, Captain. All right. Ballard? Yes, sir. Lieutenant King and I have been talking about this. Yes, sir. If you haven't told us the truth about what happened, I suggest you change your story right now. It'll be a lot easier all around. I have told you the truth, Captain. You said three shots were fired at you. Where's the gun? I don't know. It must be there someplace. We looked for two hours, Ballard. It must be there. Ballard, a policeman carries a revolver for his own protection, protection of the public, and for use in apprehension of fugitives. This boy was not a dangerous future. He fired three shots at me. I was entitled to defend myself. The boy's 17 years old. He had no previous record. You say you jumped him trying to break into a car. There's no evidence that the car was tampered with. We can't find the gun. 
Now, how about giving us a straight story on what happened there? I told you exactly what happened, Captain. I don't think you did. I did, sir. Just a second. My first precinct, Captain Tron. Sergeant Waters, RTS, Yes, Sergeant. We just heard from Bellevue. That boy died on the operating table. Oh. The mother was down there. She insists on coming yes. up here and seeing you. She's on the way. Shall I send her up to the detectives? No. I'll be here, Sergeant. Yes, sir. The boy died. Oh, it's too bad. I'm sorry, Captain. You should be, Ballard. The mother's on her way up here now. What am I going to tell her? I don't know, Captain. Neither do I. Lieutenant King and I spoke to Patrolman Ballard further in regard to the events leading to the death of 17-year-old Harry Malenke. He stuck to his story without a variation. After a few minutes, Lieutenant King left my office to return to the detective squad upstairs. I instructed Patrolman Ballard to take a chair across from my desk and wait. As I tackled some of the paperwork that had accumulated on my desk, he sat looking straight forward out the open door leading to the muster room. It was a long wait. Twenty-five minutes to four in the morning, Patrolman Ballard saw the front door of the station house open and Mrs. Malenke walk in. <clears throat> Captain. Hmm? Yes? I think the mother just came in. Mm -hmm. If it's her, we'll know about it. Yes, sir. Only first precinct, Captain Cronin. Sergeant Waters, Captain. Mrs. Malenke is out here. I ask her to come in, Sergeant. Yes, sir, right. Uh, just a second, Captain. What? Well, who is he? Oh. Uh, she has her eldest son with her, uh, Captain. She wants to bring him in, too. All right, Sergeant. Yes, sir, Ballard. Yes, sir. He still fired three shots at you? Yes, sir. Mm. Come in. Go on, Ma. You don't have to be afraid of him. I'm not afraid. No, Mrs. Malay. Yes. How do you do? This is Patrolman Ballard. I'm Captain Cronin. Mrs. Malenke. I came here so you could tell me what to do. My boy is down there down there, dead. What am I going to do? I don't know. Cop shot him. Is that what a cop is for, to go around shooting boys? Is it? What am I going to do? I don't have any money to bury him, even. <laughs> poor Harry. <laughs> poor boy. I don't know. You tell me. A young boy like that. Don't worry, Ma. You'll get this taken care of. There's laws about something like this. What about those laws? We're making a thorough investigation, Mr. Uh, Malenke. I understand you are Mrs. Malenke's oldest son. That's my George. He's the only one left now. First my husband. Now Harry. It's only my Georgie. Hi, oh, George. Hi. You live at home, George? No, no. He lives in Jersey over with an aunt. But maybe you'll come home now. Won't you, George? Will you come home now? I think about it, Ma. I told you, I think about it. Is this a cop that shot Harry? Yes, I'm the one. Well, what's going to happen to him? Nothing, I'll bet. How, how could you do it to my boy? How? Tell me how. Don't talk to him, Ma. You won't get any satisfaction. Please, George. Cold blood, just like that. Yeah, I guess you ought to know about cold blood, huh, George? After I get a lesson from you, George, maybe. you ran away, left your brother dying tonight. What are you talking you about? You were with him, weren't you? Me? I know you were with him. I Two was you were not. Listen. You thought you got rid of the gun, but we found it. You did not. I threw it. A... No. No, we didn't find it, George. Not yet. But we will. George. You were with Harry? Oh, Ma. You were with him? Yeah, Ma, I was with him. See what's on him, Ballard, yes, sir? All right, hold still, George. George, why didn't you tell me? You come home and you didn't tell me. You didn't say a word. Harry was dying. You didn't say a word. Uh, he's clean, Captain. Okay. What happened, George? Not a word. It wasn't my fault. I don't care whose fault it was. Tell me what happened. Oh, it's me and Harry together. 
We had a few beards, and I said, come on, I'll show you how to make some money. My Harry, my poor boy. So I took him over there. I stood him on the lot there off the sidewalk where they were taking down the buildings. I had a gun. I told him to hold it. I said, watch me, and I went to open the car. Then this cop comes along, and I run into where Harry was. Oh, no, no, my boy. We lit out across the place together. The cop hollered. Harry turned and shot. I only saw one, Captain, just one. Cop shot back and hit Harry. He dropped, and I tried to see if he was all right. I picked up the gun and ran to the top of that big pile of bricks. Cop saw me up there and hollered again. I took a shot at him. He took a shot back. It missed me, but I hollered anyway, so he wouldn't shoot anymore. What am I going to do? I don't know. Then I ran out into the street. I don't know what to do. I went to Ma's house. I was going to tell her before I went back to Jersey, but I couldn't. I just couldn't, so I went to bed. You should have told me. You should have. Ma, please, I'm telling you now. Georgie, what am I going to do? What? I don't know, Ma. I got my own trouble. Thanks, Captain. Thanks for getting me off the hook. How did you know? Tell me how you knew. If he didn't, he saw only one, that's all. I'm entitled to know. Sure, George. I'll tell you. I had a little information, and I took a great big guess. Twenty first precinct, Sergeant Waters. What kind of a ring? A diamond? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Well, how do you know she's a thief? Yeah, I see. 21st Precinct transcribed. A factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York.